Hello, my name is Tina and welcome to Dating a Widow. This conversation is exclusive on YouTube and comes out every Friday at noon. So go ahead and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a single episode. Today's conversation is about giving yourself permission to move forward. The biggest part in dating is realizing that you're dating again and giving yourself permission to know that this is okay. The idea of dating after your spouse dies comes with so many different thoughts and emotions. One, you may be plagued with the idea of feeling like you are cheating on your spouse. The idea that you are going out on a date and you know in your heart you may feel still married. Those are normal feelings. But the reality is your spouse is no longer in this world. And if you decide to date and possibly remarry, you are not cheating. What you have done is completed life goals. You have fulfilled your wedding vows till death do you part. The other thing that you now have to consider is what you want for your joy and your happiness. Does that include coupling with someone else? Does that include allowing someone in your space to love you? You have the right to do that. The third thing, you also have to be prepared for the naysayers. There may be children, there may be siblings, there may be even your parents or neighbors that may have a word to give to you about you're dating too soon or you're waited long enough. No one will be satisfied. And the reality is, this is your journey. You may take input from other people, but the final decision is yours. And maybe you and your spouse had a conversation about what your life would look like in their absence. Maybe you already know that the goal was if something happened to them, that you were fine to go out and date and maybe remarry. But maybe you didn't have that conversation with that spouse and you're struggling with the concept of dating and validating your own feelings. I would suggest that you consider an exercise where you write a letter to your deceased spouse explaining to them how much you love them, how much you cared for them, how much you missed them. And now you're seeking permission to date, to remarry. And then after a few days have passed, pick up that same letter and respond back to yourself in the voice of your spouse. You were married to them. You have a concept of what they may have said even though you did not have the conversation. That may provide the closure that you need. Also, there may be some people listening that had a marriage that was not pleasant. They may be excited about the idea of giving themselves permission to go out and date again. And that is perfectly fine. And yes, you may be concerned that if my late spouse, the marriage with them was bad, what could I get into with the next one? I encourage you to take all the lessons that you have learned from your marriage, whether it was good or it was bad, and leverage those in the decisions that you make as far as dating someone else again. Be aware of the red flags, pay attention to what resonates with you and what doesn't, and you don't have to rush anything. This is your journey. You are writing your story. And if you open yourself and your heart to love again, love has a way of finding in the most unpredicted times and opportunities. But what's most important is you make yourself available. And so with that permission of opening yourself to someone else loving you, I encourage you to love yourself first. Find out the things that are wonderful about you that you appreciate. Look yourself in the mirror in the morning and remind yourself how wonderful you are, how resilient, how brilliant you are, and how what a gift you are to this world. So if you allow someone else to join you on this journey, that would be a gift to them as well to yourself. Please provide me with your comments or your suggestions as far as future topics to consider in the comments or email me at widowhoodrealtalk 
at gmail.com. Thanks for being here. See you next Friday.